This is a CAST instructional video, Intro to Label Editor. A link will be posted in the video description if you have not already downloaded and installed Sealworks Pro and Label Editor. The first video in this series also covers initial setup and install of Label Editor and Sealworks Pro. Okay, in this video we will be covering Intro to Label Editor. This is the software that pairs with CLWorks Pro, gives you the ability to edit custom labels and create your own labels. Also has a few cast preset labels that you can use. We'll cover all of that later in the video. Okay, you'll notice that it looks a lot like CLWorks Pro. Basically across the top, you can start a new label, open an existing label that you've saved, save your current label, or make some other changes to the label you're currently working on. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to establish a connection to our scale. This is similar to CLWorks Pro, need connection to your scale, whether it's via serial or your network, in order to download things to that scale. So we will select TCP IP, we're on our network, we've connected to the scale before, so it shows up here, but if you're connecting to this scale for the first time, you will likely not, not see it here, it will be blank. So to remove this, you would just press scan, as long as your connection is good, you will see your scale here. It should be the right model. Again, select the right model. If you're working on a 7200, you obviously want that selected. You also want to make sure that you select your scale type, otherwise you will get an error message. You just need a name for your scale. Okay, this is the message you'd get if you did not select your scale type. So we can just easily go back and make sure it is selected to bench type. Okay, now that you're connected to your scale, you can upload an existing label if that's what you want to do. For this portion of the video, we are going to talk about creating a new label from scratch. So in order to do that, press the new tab. Give your label a name that you remember once you go into the scale, this is the name you will use. Along with the ID number, you can create up to 20 unique labels, but it has to be a number between 51 and 99. You do have to change this on your scale. And you also have to input your dimensions. Standard is 60-40 for a 10 label and most of the standard size labels will fit with the 60-40 setting. Once you have this all set, it's okay. We'll get the grid layout here. Everything on the grid is the thing that will appear on the label. The portion is the margin. To showcase this, we're going to open up one of my preset labels for the 8 and 10 cast standard label. We'll post this in the video description if you do want to use it. This would be for mostly if you have a blank label but you like the 8010 layout. We'll highlight here, if you click on the text, we'll see that it tells you down in the bottom left of what exactly that text is or what field that is. We'll get into that a little bit later on. You can also double click on it and give you some other editing options barcode and various other presets. If you've seen an 8010 label before, um, you'll recognize all of this. But for now, we're going to create a label from scratch. So we'll give it the same name and the same number, so it will overwrite that one. If you had saved it previously. Make sure to create a folder to save your labels in. Travel to the CAS seal works create a label folder like i did here 
make sure to save all your labels in that spot. So in case you have to share them, it's easy to find. So this label is called test one on the scale. So we're going to call it test one in our, in our file save. Okay, now we can get into what everything does here on the left. The most popular thing you will use is the field tab. The field tab contains a lot of the presets that you will see on a typical label. You'll see here department name. Now it may say bakery on there, but it will be the department name that has to do with that PLU. Same goes for all the PLU, ingredients, uh, sell by date. It might have a stock um, text on there when you put it on your label, but it will input from the scale depending on what that PLU brings up once you print it. That's what the field tab contains. For example, here you have the PLU name one. Obviously you want that on every label. We're going to start with that, you select it, and left click. doesn't matter where you put it because once you get here, you're going to want to move it around. Okay. You can use the box like uh, your, your standard um, editing with anything else, whether it's pictures, things of that nature. You can make it bigger. You can also make the text bigger here. So you need it. Number two, so it's a little bit bigger, we have to expand our box. Once you get the text fit, and make the field a little bit bigger. You can also uncouple the lock aspect ratio in case you want your text to be taller or wider. With the locked aspect ratio, it will keep it the same. So whatever number you select for vertical, horizontal, will match. You can also underline italic and bold text. Align to the left, align to the right. Align to the center is usually what you want to go with. Have everything centered. get to what uh, bring to front and push to back does a little bit later on. Let's make sure you save that real quick. And we will get to some other things here. Just move this up here. Back to the field tab. Another thing you're going to want on there, a lot of the times PLU has name one, name two. You can use a PLU name all, the all setting, uh, two selections above. But for this case, we're just going to add the first two. Keep in mind on your label, this this may look big enough on the label editor. It may look like the number two is is uh, is the right size that you're going for, but until you print it out, and we'll do that a little bit later, you get a better idea of what size you're really going to need. So get it set the way you want, but you can always make changes at a later time. Moving on to the tabs above, you can break them down a little bit with the price, weight, and date options. So if you're looking for something specific and you don't want to scroll through all the options, we're just looking for our unit price. Price per pound or kg. We also want to add our total price, another thing you always have on a label. So again, these are all nines, but this will populate with the total price and the price per pound or the price per item, depending on what you're using and what the scale tells the label should be on there. Okay, now we'll move on to static text. This is text that will appear on your label, and this will appear exactly like it does on the label editor. So if you leave this as sample text, it will say sample text. So you can go in here and change um, some things with the settings, but most of all, just makes you change the text to what how you want this to appear on your label. So this is this is our unit price to the right. So we want to make sure our static text says unit price. Same goes for our total price. You always want to make sure you center everything, and especially if that's that uniform look across your label.
Okay, now we will move on to the barcode. This is something you will need on every label. Use it for scanning your POS system. Depends on what label, or I mean, uh, what what's what POS system you're using, what you need on your barcode. You're not actually gonna edit what type of barcode you're using. It'll just give you a standard layout here, but you can change some dimensions on it. it does need that preset width, so you can't change that. Want to make sure aligning it with other things you don't really overlap too much because if you do there's a chance that something might get overwritten on the label and it won't appear it doesn't always happen it comes with some trial and error and playing around with it it will take you a while to get the label looking exactly like you want it so don't give up you can always come back to label editor save your project and tweak things as you need it With the Label Editor Pro, you can also add an image. If you want a store image or a picture for a sale, depending on what you're selling, you can add that option here. Use the File Option, File Open tab. We just have some pictures here for our CL7200 keyboard. We're just gonna use something here, for example. Do need a pretty crisp image or it, it won't look the way you want and it also is going to be grayscale you obviously can't have color so we'll give you a few options here on the right what you can select what the original looks like it's going to be grayscale so you're going to lose some color and a little bit of detail so make sure you have a good crisp image and don't expect too much from it that's about the best you're going to get Again, adding an image is a little more advanced, so we will cover that in a future, more in-depth video. Now we can also add a box using the box tab. This is if you want something contained within a box on your label. You won't get that. We'll see with the French bread up top, there's a box around it, but that won't appear on your label. It just would be a blank. So what we're gonna do here too, is because we're stacking two different text, we want to make sure that obviously the price is above the box. Now that we have that where we want it, we want to use the sent back with the box selected. That will push it behind the text or for the numbers, for your unit price. See you here. Sent it back, spring to front, depending on what you're selected. You obviously want the numbers in front. Okay, we're just going to up the size on our text here. It wasn't big enough. Save that and then we're going to use the transfer tab to transfer the changes to our scale. Once this is done, the label is on your scale and ready to be set up. Note your ID number and your name. This is what you will have to input on the 1510 menu. Okay, we will touch on how to do that in a little bit, but for now we are going to discard our custom label and we're gonna open an 8010 preset label. This preset will be available for download in the video description. Just gonna go into our label file and select our 8010 preset. This will look familiar if you use an 8010 label already. can continue to use that with the option 10 in the 1510 menu. This is for people who would like to make some subtle changes to the 8010 label layout. So for now we're going to travel to the 1500 menu. Use selection one for label format. Now here is where you want to input your label number. See the 10, 10 is the preset for 8010. 51 is our custom 8010 layout. 
Now important here, you want to make sure on page two of label format that these two numbers you see on your screen match the number on the first page. It's important that all three numbers match unless you're using a separate label for each selection. Doing a test print here with a PLU. We can see here with the preset, because we're using an 8010 label, there's some black lines there that are already on the ticket or on the label. So we want to get rid of those, make some other subtle changes to this 8010. And so on the left side here, if you want to remove something, just select it and either press delete on your keyboard or use the delete tab on the top. those lines gone, press the save button and transfer the changes to your scale. You now printing out another PLU, we can see that the lines are gone. So our, our changes were saved. And looking at this label, right now we're not currently using a tear weight. We don't have that selected on our options for our label. So if we're not using it to make our label look cleaner, we can delete that as well. So we will just make those selections and delete them. We did with the lines. We also don't have a shop message or a store message, but we do want our phone number. Go again to the field tab, scroll down until we find store number, and place it on your label. Just going to center this and make it the same size as the rest of our text. Save it once again and transfer it to our scale. Sometimes the first label will not make the changes. Don't get discouraged, just print out a second one and the changes should be made. As you can see here, our tear weight is removed. And now our phone number is there instead of the store message. This is how you can make some subtle changes to the E to 10 preset. Any changes made to your label will not be overwritten until you press the save folder. You can also use the undo tab to undo any changes that you've made. The 8010 preset seen in this video will be available for download in the video description. For more information on getting custom labels made for your scale, please reach out to your local dealer. And for more information on the labels that we offer, please visit cas-usa.com.